Hi, so this is Mrs H Psychology and today's question for you is how can I change a specific behaviour in somebody? To answer this, we're going to start by watching these two short clips. The two uh, pigeons are at either end of a small ping pong table. One pigeon uh, pecks the ball as it comes toward him and knocks it toward the other pigeon. The other pigeon pecks the ball back across the table. If it goes past one pigeon, the other pigeon can eat. And if it goes the other way, the other pigeon eats. So that there is a real, it's a real game. The uh, pigeon uh, is reinforced for a cross-court shot if that is what gets the ball past his opponent. So how did they get these animals to do this? And how does this link to psychology? I'm Mrs H from Mrs H Psychology and these are videos on introducing psychology as part of a series. Okay, so back to those pigeons. Can pigeons read? This one gives every indication because he's been taught to distinguish between two words and to behave appropriately. He's learned his different response to each sign by being rewarded with food. So the bird isn't acting independently. Its behavior is shaped by controlling its environment. So the first thing to know is that this comes from an area of psychology called the behaviorist approach. And one of the key figures in the behaviorist approach was a man called B.F. Skinner, who introduced operant conditioning. So how did Skinner train the pigeons to play ping pong? The first task was to isolate an individual piece of behaviour and see how that could be changed. Skinner did this by keeping individual pigeons at about three quarters of their normal weight so that the birds were always hungry and food could be used as an automatic reward. Pigeon learned that pecking the disc produced a reward. Then the behaviour of pecking could be studied in relation to how often that reward was offered or in Skinner's terms, what was the schedule of reinforcement. Is what, what we call schedules of reinforcement. Reinforcement is what the layman calls reward, and you can schedule it uh, so that a reward occurs every now and then when a pigeon does something. We usually use a response with a pigeon pecking a little disc, a little spot in the wall, and you can reinforce with food. But you don't reinforce every time, you every perhaps every tenth time, or perhaps only once every minute or something like that. There are a very large number of, of schedules and they have their uh, special effects. And there is a good example of how you can move from uh, the, uh, the pigeon to the human case because one of the, one of the schedules which is very effective with, with rats or pigeons is what we call a variable ratio schedule and that is at the heart of all gambling devices and has the same effect. A pigeon can become a pathological gambler just as a person can. So this is about operant conditioning and it's all about what happens after somebody has acted. In other words, the consequences of their behaviour. So it will involve reinforcers which will be used to shape behaviours. So a reinforcer, by definition, is anything that will increase the likelihood of that same behaviour occurring again. Positive reinforcement is receiving something you like in response to your behaviour. As long as that response increases the chance of you repeating that same behaviour. There are loads of different examples of positive reinforcement, but one could be that your hours of practising a skill pay off because you score the winning goal. Or another positive reinforcement could be that someone smiles at you because you've opened the door for them or you've let them out in a traffic jam. Negative reinforcement, on the other hand, is when your action results in something unpleasant or aversive being removed. So here's my first example. Let's say I've got a headache. So what do I do? Well, in my case, I probably take paracetamol, so my headache goes away. So what happens the next time I have a headache? I'm probably going to take paracetamol because it worked last time. Okay, so my action, well, I take paracetamol. The consequence of that is the headache goes away. So that consequence means my paracetamol taking behaviour is going to be strengthened next time. Second example of negative reinforcement. Imagine you're in the supermarket and you hear this. You turn the corner and you see a parent trying to calm 
a screaming child who's after a toy. There's clearly a very stressful situation for the parent. People are looking at the child, tutting. There's a lot of noise. The parent is at their wit's end. So what happens? Very often, they'll hand over the toy or the sweets that the child wants. It's a natural response. But let's examine this for a minute. Who has been reinforced and how? Well, the parent has had that awful din and embarrassment removed. So they've been negatively reinforced because the unpleasant stimuli has been removed. But of course, the child has got what they wanted. So they have been positively reinforced. In this way, they're all likely to behave in the same way next time. And that means these behaviours are being stamped in, according to Skinner. And that means shaped for the future. Thank you. How thoughtful. Would you like a chocolate? Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, sorry, Sheldon, I almost sat in your spot. Did you? I didn't notice. Have a chocolate. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're here a lot now. Am I talking too much? I'm oh, sorry. Zip. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chocolate? <laughs> yes, please. Okay, before we finish, let's think back to that behavior that you wanted to change in somebody. Yeah, you guessed it. The answer lies in shaping their behavior, so reinforcing them when the action you want has occurred. Skinner talked of shaping successive approximations. So spotting a similar behavior to the one you want, reinforcing that securely and shaping it more and more until eventually you have the specific behavior you want. And if you want to learn more about behaviorism, check out my video on the behaviorist approach. If you like this video, it'd be great if you could subscribe and please share them with anyone else you think might be interested in them. This is Mrs. H psychology YouTube channel. These videos for anyone wanting to know a bit more about psychology when they're learning from home. So do feel free to put in the comment box any other topics you'd like me to cover. But thanks very much for watching.